Hey everybody, this is Dory. I am doing a second animation tutorial. As you can see, I've already worked out quite a few things, um, besides my basic foot animation. For those who didn't watch my old tutorial, I will provide a link in a caption, and it's also in the description. So you can go look there and grab that and go watch my old tutorial before watching this one. Specifically in this tutorial, I will be going over follow-through animation. Follow through is basically a secondary action, which, as you can see, like in the tail, I will play it for you, is it catches up the wind and falls back down. It is an action that takes place because of another action. So because the tail is going up and down, the feather is catching air and coming back down and fanning out and then coming back up and catching air and falling down etc. So that's follow through animation. Also in this tutorial I will show you a few things like a few tips like for instance if you want to loop an animation like for in like I only have eight steps here eight frames right now it will probably eventually be 32 frames to keep it nice and smooth and flowing so 30 frames so right now it's eight and you can take this bar and slide it over to the end of your animation. If your animation loops when you play it, it will continuously loop your animation so you can watch it for inconsistencies and see, hey, this is working, this isn't working, what do I need to fix? So I'm about halfway through with the follow through of her antenna. She has two of them, but I'm only doing one right now. I will probably make them very similar to each other. So once I have one, I can use the first one as a guideline for the second one, which will be a little further back in the foreground, or in the, the background. So we are on, when I start my animation, I always start at step four. So now I've labeled my layers, and I labeled this one as step four low. So at this point, when I get to step four, which I can see down here, everything is at its lowest. When I get up here to step 8, which I have marked as high, everything should be at its highest. So nothing should go higher at 8 or lower than 4 at any point. This keeps a consistency in my animation. So I know that this is my low layer, this is my high layer. And just from the natural fluidity of motion, it should continuously, some consistency should be maintained throughout the, the animation. So doing that helps me remember when and where I need to draw things. So right now I am on the high layer, I believe, because I just drew layer 7. And so I'm on layer 8. Well, I just drew layer 8. Okay, so I'm starting to go back down. And to do this, I go ahead and I drag layer 1, which is down here. So it's over layer 8 up here. Now I'm going to slide layer 7 back so I can't see it anymore. And I'm going to take layer 8 and lower the opacity down. So now instead of, because this is a looped animation, instead of drawing just up, 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 I'm drawing down now. So I'm drawing a layer 1. And what I'm going to do is, even though our head is further back, I'm going to go ahead and trace over the length of my antennae and draw it like this and after I do this I can move it later to where it would need to be depending on the head position and how high or low it is. Right now I don't need to worry quite as much about exactly where it's positioned as much as how the length consistency is the same because her head is going forward and her head is coming back but also because of the wind her antennae is going up and her antennae is going down. No because I have a lot of programs running computer, you need to get over yourself. <laughs> and, you know, why do you buy an i5 core if your computer's just going to whine at you all the time? Anyway, so for this part, we're going to... Her feather is going to have catch the full weight of the wind because it's being pushed back down. So, her feather... should be completely up now. Just like this one right here. As using my tail as a guide, I can tell when the wind is catching here and when the wind is catching here, so they're the same. This makes sure that my wind is the same and my velocity is the same, so she's traveling at the same speed. So her tail and her feathers should be about the same up and down motion, in theory. 
Yeah, I could be wrong. Now because I've dragged this frame all the way over, I can see it the whole time. Boop. And so now that I've drawn this, I can go ahead and use my marquee tool, grab it, and I'm going to turn it slightly down because at this point she's pushing her head back, so her antenna is going to come back too. And I use my arrow keys to nudge it over to where it should be on her head. Now looking at it from here, I can see that because it's pushing back more, I might want to have a little more kick on the back of my feather over here. So now I'm going to slide this back over and watch it at the end of this animation, see how it looks. Okay, for some reason I feel like it's a little weird, so I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning of this and watch it again. Yeah, it's a little too sudden of a kick, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and lessen the kick a little. Or I'm going to drag my layer all the way over and look like a dumbass. Excuse me. Okay, uh, we're going to put this right here. Alrighty. They're raising this all together because I failed completely. Not sure, but we're going to make this a little more subtle because maybe the next frame will have a little more kick than that. As you can see, this one has a little bit of a catching this up. So we're going to go and see if we can get in a little closer. Because right now it's very sketchy, and that's okay. Because I'd rather work out the way things are moving here than have to worry about it later. Like I said in the old one, the detail is a secondary thing. Alright, we're going to see if that looks a little better. Okay, going back down to layer 1. <clears throat> and let's watch this again. Perhaps drawing this next animation, like this one right here, where it's coming down once more, will help see exactly what's going on. Sometimes, when, like for instance, when I was drawing the legs and I finally finished the leg animation, Everybody makes mistakes. So I drew the leg animation. I ended up redoing half of it to make the, the way it flowed better. Same thing with the tail. Drew it once, watched it a couple times, and then I worked out the kinks. Because you're only one person and not a whole team of animators, sometimes it takes you a little while to see exactly what you did. But knowing when you're wrong is probably one of the best tools you could ever have. Alright, now looking at the tail to see about how much should be visible. I'm going to try drawing almost the same thing I have here, right here. And see if maybe, going back to the first frame, and making this a little smaller, might help it move a little easier. I'm probably going to add a more bounce to the antennae as I go further on, but for the moment I want to get the gist of the movement down. So we're going to watch this again.
most of this animation is trial and error. Say, okay, that didn't work, let me try this. And I saw that the motion in that wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I'm going to lower this back down just a little. And deselect, which I think is... Yeah. Trying to learn my shortcuts for Windows. It'll take some time to get used to. And play. I see some inconsistency in my antennae length, and that's okay. <laughs> I see myself making much mistakes while I'm trying to teach other people. It's fine, don't worry about it. In all honesty, if we don't figure it out here, it's going to be way worse later, which is why we draw things. Obviously, her antennae is not just, just a line with a foofly thing on the end. That would be me getting a text message. Awesome text message, huh? Okay. I can see here we want to bring this down and back. All right. So the more complicated your animation, and the more complicated your follow through, since there's so many things going on right here. Her head's moving forward, the wind's catching up here, her whole body is like... This antennae, especially going down more than going up, is going to be greatly affected by, like, her neck coming in, where her spine is, um, you know, becoming in a more relaxed state. And the wind's still catching her antennae. As long as when I get back to where I started, Things go up when they go up, and they catch the wind and catch here. So you look at the tail. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and up the opacity on everything. So we can watch this as a nice, clean animation. And everybody can see clearly exactly what is going on. All right. Checking to make sure none of my layers overlap. Okay, now let's watch this from the top. Oop, there's some overlapping. Here we go. I always miss that one. Okay. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for a new one. Let's come out a little so we can see the whole image. And let's watch. Let's see. It's a little slow right now. It's probably going to be twice the speed it is now. That's okay. I want to be able to see everything and the way it moves right now before I add in more frames and then it looks awkward. So here we can see, for instance, in her tail where it's catching the wind going up and then going back down. And then when it picks back up, it fills the tail because it's a fan and then it flops back down. For things like hair, it's it's more random and wild. Um, I don't have any hair on my dragon, but if anybody needs a follow-through hair tutorial or any other tutorial that you may be interested in seeing that I might be able to do, please leave a comment and let me know. If you have any question about follow-through animation, let me know as well, and I will do my best to answer it. Thanks, you guys, for watching, and I appreciate the feedback.